Hi all and welcome to a discussion of Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium using the Hardy-Weinberg equations. Today we're going to remember that our population has three different colors of flowers in it, red, white, and pink, and they exist in uh, three different amounts. We've got 90 red individuals, 35 pink, and 25 white individuals, so there's 150 in our population. And uh, we know the genotypes of each of these individuals. So red individuals are big R, big R, pink individuals are heterozygous, and white are homozygous, recessive, little r, little r. So of course, if we're counting the number of genotypes, uh, there's 150, 150 individuals, 150 genotypes. But because each individual has one, two alleles, we know that there are 300 alleles in this population. Now, what we want to ask is, is this population in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? That is, um, does P and Q maintain from one generation to the next? And we can do some math to figure out whether P and Q stay the same over the generations or if they're changing. So let's start by calculating P. So we know that P is the frequency of the dominant allele, the frequency of big R. And we have um, two places to find big R in our homozygous dominance and in our heterozygous individuals. So if we're going to calculate the frequency of big R, we need to ask, um, out of the 300 alleles that are present, how many are big R? So we've got 2 times 90 individuals who have big R, and then also 1 times the number of heterozygous individuals, whoops, I need to write the number in there, the number of heterozygous individuals who have a big R. So we count these guys twice because there are two, and these guys just once because they have one big R. So we can simplify that down to be 215 out of 300, which is the same as 0.72 if you round up. Okay. Importantly, there is another way to do this math, and I want to show it to you for just a second here. P equals the frequency of big R, all still true. We want to take into account the big R, big R individuals and the heterozygous individuals. But in this case, I want to say for every individual that's homozygous dominant, um, I'm going to count half of an individual who's heterozygous, so out of the total population. So we could say 90 plus one half of 35 out of 150 individuals. Okay, uh, if, you, if you do the math, uh, this is exactly the same as up here, um, but we're just dividing by the number of alleles versus the number of individuals. Um, and it might be easier for us to think about uh, using this math up here where we're counting alleles since P is really thinking about the allele frequency. All right, I've gotten rid of that alternative strategy to calculate P. And I want to point out just one more thing here. We, we could say um, that to calculate P, we just need to figure out um, how, figure out P squared. And that's the number of big R, big R individuals um, out of the total population. So uh, 90 out of a total of 150 and take the square root of that and that'll give us P. Well, that's a great choice if we already know that the population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. In this case, we want to ask if this is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. And so it's so much better for us to uh, not use this shortcut strategy and instead actually count the number of alleles up here, including heterozygotes and homozygous dominant. If we were already in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, then we could use P squared equals uh, homozygous dominant, but we, we don't know that in this case. That's what we're trying to calculate. So I'm gonna get rid of that math too. All right, now we've calculated P three different times, and I want to just uh, repeat that calculation, except for now we're going to calculate Q, the frequency of the recessive allele, little r. Um, and in this case, since we're not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, we can't just take Q squared. 
Um, instead, I'm going to have us actually count the number of alleles that are in this population. So we'll take 1 times the heterozygotes, because they have one copy of little r, and 2 times the number of homozygous recessive, because they have two little r's, okay? Out of the total number of alleles, which is 300. So we can simplify that math down to 85 out of 300, and even further down to 0 0.28 if you round, okay? So now we've calculated P and Q. We've done it by actually counting the number of alleles because we don't know if these individuals are in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. And uh, happily enough, P plus Q equals one because um, big R and little r are the only two alleles in this population. Um, by summing them together, they should equal fully one or 100%. And they do, which is great. Terrific, now we've got P equals 0 0.72 and Q equals 0 0.72. Two, eight. Um, and the next thing we want to figure out is, given these allele frequencies, what are our potential genotype frequencies? And that is just some straightforward math. So P squared, or the big R, big R individuals, is going to be 0 0.72 squared. Uh, the little r, little r individuals is going to be 0 0.28 squared. Um, and the heterozygous individuals will be 2 times 0 0.72 times 0 0.28. If we do the math on these, the frequency of the homozygous dominant individuals will be 0 0.52. The frequency of the heterozygous individuals will be 0 0.4. And the frequency of the homozygous recessive individuals will be 0 0.08. Now, great, we've got the frequencies, um, but I also want to calculate the actual numbers. Um, so we started with a population of 150. Let's calculate what the numbers would be for a population of 150, and that means we need to multiply 150 times each of these. Um, and that math turns out to be 78 individuals will be big R, big R, red, 60 individuals will be heterozygous, pink, and just 12 individuals will be homozygous, recessive, little r, little r. Okay, so we've calculated P and Q by counting the number of alleles in this population. We've calculated P squared, 2PQ, and Q squared based on those allele frequencies. And then we've also calculated the number of individuals in the population um, given these P and Q values. Now these are the number of individuals that we would expect in the population if it were in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Now what we started with was 90 RR individuals, 35 heterozygous individuals, and 25 homozygous recessive individuals. Um, that was our original numbers. Here's our calculated numbers. Our original numbers are what we observed. Our calculated numbers are our expected values. So to compare between observed and expected, and ask, are these, I mean, are these actually the same or are they just different enough that these are uh, different numbers than what we might expect? Um, we can run a chi-squared test. And I'm not going to go through the math to do a chi-squared test here, um, but I think it's safe to say that this chi-squared test would give us um, a p-value, that's really unfortunate, a significance value of less than 0.05. Uh, which would mean that these are different than one another. Different numbers. So that suggests that this population is not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium because what we observed right here 
It's not the same proportions of homozygous, heterozygous, recessive individuals as what we expected to see if they were in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. All right, last but not least, we've determined our uh, population is not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium because P and Q change. Um, and what we actually measured was that P squared and 2PQ and Q squared change uh, across different generations. So we're not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Terrific. What can we do with this information? The math that we've practiced here today will help us test whether a population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. You can use these same strategies of calculating all this good stuff up here to answer simpler questions about how inheritance works or how many uh, homozygous dominant or heterozygous individuals are in a population. Uh, but this particular problem was testing, is the population we're interested in in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium? All right, bring questions to office hours and I will talk to you soon.